Okay, this is Ashley with Geeky Cool. I am here with Jessica Cage at DragonCon. Jessica, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. I know that you are a huge writer now in modern fiction, and you are writing for um, Webtoon. Yeah. Um, so, hi, I'm Jessica Cage. I um, write urban fantasy and just all sorts of fantasy that feature characters of color. Um, as you said, I did have a story that was picked up by Webtoon for their new Yonder app, uh, which is about four sisters born for each season and who are responsible for keeping the gates of hell closed. Um, so that's kind of where I am. I'm, I write fantasy that's predominantly non-human and um, full of demons, dragons, fairies, things like that. <laughs> and what got you into writing? <laughs> Um, my grandmother, when I was a kid, I was that, that child that had all the stories and wanted to talk, 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 talk. And I would always choose my grandmother because I knew she liked stories. She had all these books and, you know, um, but I always chose the point when she was actually trying to read a book or watch her stories on TV. And so she gave me, I just remember distinctly her handing me a pen and pad and was like, go write that down and I'll read it later. Um, and she actually read it. She didn't just do it to shut me up. Like she came back and she was like, all right, let's read this. And most of the time I was just telling her the story anyway. Um, but that, that, uh, sparked my, um, joy of actually writing down stories and sharing them with other people. Um, I wrote for my grandmother specifically for a very long time. I didn't want anyone else to read them, but it was those early days of just creating something for my grandmother that, um, inspired me to do what I do now. And are your um, books, are they all just individual novels, or are some of them series? Um, I have five series. Most of my books are series because I don't know how to end a story, apparently, in one book. <laughs> I'm always like, but I could do more with these characters. I can build this into something greater. Um, but I do have a few standalone novels. Um, those are usually actually novellas or shorter, like, pieces for those who people who are just like new to my world and new to my writing so they can kind of get a little taste of what I do. Awesome. And what do you think your main reader audience um, that you're trying to market towards would be? When I first started writing to publish, it was the mom who has like little kids and just wants something that they can gobble up really quickly in between like writing for play dates and things of that nature, right? Because when I was a teenager, I had all the time in the world to read and I could read a book a day and just, you know, the big chunky, you know, <laughs> books that you have to like have a special bag for, right? Um, but as an adult, after I had my son, it became harder to just do the thing that I enjoyed doing, which was reading. So I was like, I want to create stories, which are still fantasy and still the thing that I loved as a younger reader, but that is focused on adults because I'm an adult now. Um, and then that can be gobbled up in like a, a weekend if you have a couple of spots, right? Um, for the mom like me who just wanted to um, still enjoy that thing that we love, but like we have adult responsibilities now. Um, but as my son has grown older and he leaves less of my attention, I'm like, oh, I have more time to read again. So my books have gotten a little chunkier. Um, but my audience is really, I want to say that girl who didn't see herself in the book when they were younger, um, because that's what I write. I write POC um, characters, black characters at the forefront of my stories, because when I was younger, I didn't see that, you know what I mean? And I think a lot of people in my position now who are now creating these stories, um, that, that was the whole motivation behind what we're doing, right? We wanted to continue to create the stories, but also from a different lens, um, so yeah, my audience is the mom who just wants little bites of, you know, something magical. Um, and also that, you know, black girl or brown girl who didn't see herself in the stories. Okay, so who is your favorite main character out of all of your books? Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, favorite main character. Can I choose more than one? Um, you can. <laughs> I would say Serenata just because her story, she's, she's like the most vocal character in my head at all times, even when I'm not writing her. Um, she's so demanding, but her story was the story I found my voice as an author. Like, I wasn't trying to be an author anymore. I was like, this is me. This is who I am. Um, she's a mermaid. Um, 
Jax the Dragon, which you'll see him in several of my books. He crosses series. Like, I love this guy so much. Like, I need to write him his own book. Um, but for right now, he's just this character that pops up, and my readers are like, oh, that's Jax. Okay, we know him. Um, and then more recently, I want to say Maze. Um, he's a Shadow Walker in my Tales of Novia collection. And I don't know, writing him was, it was a challenge because I had never really delved into that type of like emotional development for a male character on the level that I did with Maze. And he went through some very tough things, but he comes out of it um, still with so much hope and joy. And I wanted to relay that because I know a lot of male, you know, the other men in my life who have gone through so many like hardships and I look at them today and they, they persevered. I'm like, how do I embody that in a character who has actually healed? Because a lot of conversation I have with, you know, the women in my life, like these men need to go to therapy. They need to heal. And I'm like, I know men who have healed. I know men who have gone to therapy. So I wanted to bring that to a character who was as equally flawed and healed and still on that journey of like understanding himself. And Maze is just the embodiment of that. And he's, he captures your heart and he breaks it and he, you know, his story just gets in there. Um, and now my readers are like, are you going to write more of him? And I'm like, what? That world is like uh, his own thing, but I love him so much. Yeah. What future projects um, have you started working on? If, you have any that you can divulge yeah. for us at Geeky Cool? Um, so I do this series on TikTok called Stitch Writing Prompts, um, which recently hit a million views. Congratulations. So uh, thank you. <laughs> but it's literally where I, you know, in my everyday life, I see things and these little stories pop up in my mind. And I started doing that on TikTok where I would stitch a creator who did something cool or something random. Like it, it wasn't even really a creator, but I would just make these little stories from like, this is what it inspired. And this was like a way of me kind of giving the reader an insight into like what happens in the writer's brain, right? As we concoct these stories. But people are like, okay, so where are the books? <laughs> where are these stories? We want more, right? Um, so I'm actually working on a series of books that are based off of those prompts that I did. So the first one that will come out in 2024 is called I Accidentally Summoned a Demon Boyfriend. Um, and I'm excited about this because it's fun. Like some of my more recent stuff, um, uh, which I just released, uh, Corruption of Gilda Ashes is heavy. And there's a lot of death and, dis and destruction and psychological damage for the character. Um, it's, it's interesting to like shift to something that's lighter. It's more fun, more comedic, sexy again. Cause my readers are like, where's the sex? And I'm like, I'll be back. Like, <laughs> I'm over here talking about psychology and stuff. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited about that. I am continuing my Gen Rebellion series, which I have had people like banging down my door for that. Um, yeah, and there's other projects that I can't really talk about yet because, you know, things are up in the air. But yeah, there's, there's a lot more coming. All right. Thank you so much for taking the time with us at Geeky Cool. And we hope to see you again at the con. We will be here all weekend. Yay. Thank you for having me.